we've actually been discussing the whole aspect of the technology, uh, the way it's improved, and how you started, Mark, with uh, open TME, uh, evolved into laparoscopic TME, and clearly you are one of the leaders in robotic uh, rectal cancer surgery. You were the largest contributor to the randomized control trial, the ROLAR trial. Could you tell us about um, your your thoughts and how you feel robotic has advantages, uh, first of all, and then we'll talk about the practicality and the affordability of robotics. Mm. Well, I, I, I think it came from first seeing um, one or two of the early videos produced by Tim Rockall that came out of Imperial or St. Mary's at the, at the time, and it just seemed to me that the wrist movement from the robot gave a huge advantage over the standard straight chopstick instruments that one gets with laparoscopic surgery, that you've got a wrist that you can move around the corners, particularly in, in the pelvis, and I thought that represented an advantage, and this was before the robots had become effectively commercially available in the UK. And then my chief executive, and I think it was back in 2007 or 2000, early 2008, said he said he just came up to me one day and said, "If I get one of these robot things, would you use it?" And, and that was my business case, and I just said yes. <laughs> so Sounds like a very nice idea. He, he, uh, he said, "Okay, well, we'll get we'll get one," and um, and we went over to uh, we went over to France and. Um, had a couple of oper did a, went with one of our my gynaecology colleagues and we did um, a couple of operations on on pigs to get some practice with it and then came back and did our first laparoscopic anterior resection robotic it was, robotic yeah. it was a high anterior resection but again at that stage there was nobody to precept or teach so but I felt it, it, there was all this talk about doing new operations and that was all starting to come in that you can't do new operations without without being um, precepted or, 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 or taught, but at that stage there was nobody to precept us, so we were, we were sort of... You weren't really doing a new operation, we weren't just doing using new, new operation. technology. Yeah, we were just, we were just new, new adapting technology. the new technology to do an operation that I'd learnt with Bill, that I'd subsequently developed laparoscopically, and we were doing exactly the same operation with the robot. So the first one, a high anterior resection, it wasn't defunctioned, went very well, and, and, and we continued using that. And I think... That's about the time I started coming to watch yeah, you. You came to watch me, yes, yeah, did, yeah, and, um, and, and we got you involved at that, at, at that stage. So we were very much in our early stages of our learning curve, but the learning curve wasn't too long, really, because it, it, the, the instruments worked so well. The view we got was 3D rather than 2D, which once one gets into the pelvis, I felt, gave me, gave me a better a better view. I think you had and better resolution. I think you had better we pictures. Had, we had much better pictures because of the immersive aspect and it was actually almost like being in the pelvis with the magnification. The other advantage that we got with this was that the, the, um, uh, the, the camera would go into a very tight space. We had complete control of the camera ourselves so it went into a tight space and we didn't get the smudging that we got with laparoscopically because we weren't not relying on a, a camera person. We had the control of the camera as well as, as well as the instruments. And that combined with the precise... And there's one less person learning, is it? Uh, is this a problem with robotic as opposed to laparoscopic? The camera person was learning uh, as he was moving the camera around. Yes, but we've now got the we've now got the twin consoles with the robotics, so the, that you makes can that you can put the you can put the tra the trainee into the into the into the driving seat to take over as necessary. But with with you know modern tra training methods, we try not to take over, or we demonstrate something and then give them the instruments back them themselves. So that's helped tra tra it's a bit training. Like dual normally. control on dual learning control to on drive. Learning to drive. We all learned to drive, Bill, on a single control. <laughs> we did. But yeah. all, all yeah. young people yeah. will now learn how yeah. to drive a motor car yeah. whilst we're still yeah. driving motor cars uh, yeah. and by dual control. Uh, and I, I, I think so it was really the, the, the range of movements. It's just, this is one of the aspects, is it's much better technology. But the, the problem range. is, what about the, about the practicality and the affordability? Well, uh, that is the issue, isn't it? The, 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 pra the practicality, it, 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 providing you can get the, 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 the robot, and there are systems that you can get into smaller theatres, but providing you can get the robot into your theatre, it's, it's practical. It, yeah. work, it works well. You get very quick at the setup. Um, it doesn't. It, it doesn't now take us any longer than 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 a laparoscopic oper operation. 
when one gets um, when one gets good at the setup. Um, in terms of the cost, yes, it is it is it is a high cost. Um, it has been difficult from the point of view of the ROLAR trial to show that there's any significant be benefit over, over lapros laparoscopy, although there was a trend to show that we were better with the um, large difficult male, cases, male, yeah. male, male, male patients. Than Which is a sort of case. Since you were the largest contributor to ROLAR, what was your own personal experience our own, at uh, the point? Our own personal experience, we felt we did it much better with yeah. the robot than we did with, than, than we did, we did, we did, Laparoscopic, laparoscopically and from our own personal experience if we take conversion rate with our strict definition our conversion weight went down significantly with the robot from the yeah. and you've got to bear in mind that our AP rate is very low we 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 will take out very low tumors and 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 reconstruct so we're not doing we're not doing a lot of APs but it 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 does. It gives us an advantage in terms of operating. In terms of the other aspect is is in quality of life. In terms of seeing the ner the important nerves um, um, related to sexual and bladder function, you get a much much better view robotically with the three D with the three D view and the clear vision than you do lapar laparos laparoscopically. And whether that translates into a, into into an improvement, it ha it has been shown in some centres that that. That does improve it. Our view was that it gave us a better, a, a better aspect. It's, it's my view from yeah. watching uh, you and other laparoscopic um, and robotic surgeons that they see the nerves. I would get put in at this point. We're not talking about transanal TME. I think seeing the nerves from above. Yes. It's easier than seeing yeah. them transanally. Yeah. You pick them up, you follow them down, and you, 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 preserve, you can preserve them. Uh, from, from below, you've got to find them in a much more awkward, awkward way. Than, yeah. than so from one of the aspects, Mark, in the beginning, and it may still be so, is that we talked about splenic flexure. Taking down the splenic flexure robotically wasn't very easy with the... With the, the, the initial ro robotic techniques. No. So you actually could do that laparoscopically yes. or you could not take it down and either do an end colostomy, abdominal perineus head, which yeah. I'm yeah. afraid people were doing because it's easier, or, or you could risk a mm. join on bowel. So has that changed? Can that has changed. And I, I think with the early, with the early robots, they were, they, they were less adaptive to um, doing the whole operation. Although there were some surgeons did manage to do the whole operations very nicely with the completely robotically. But we, we took a slightly different view in that we were training a lot of surgeons that weren't going to be robotic surgeons. And doing the left colon splenic flexure laparoscopically as a hybrid operation gave a big tube training opportunity for our fellows and our, our registrars to do that part laparoscopically and then we dot the robot just to do the pelvic dissection so we did it as a hybrid operation now with the more modern xi um, it's possible to do the whole operation much more simply i was going to say it's my impression that uh, in it's a matter of understanding the embryology and anatomy of the the splenic flexure mm. and once you've got on top of that mm. uh, and you stay in the right avascular planes yes you will yeah. get it down with a robot as well and yeah. probably yeah. safer than with anything i think i think that's true but it, but the the mod, the modern robot the xi is much more flexible for getting around getting around the various parts of the abdomen and working various quadr quadrants the old si was less adaptive to that and, and had of course to change there are, position, there, are so some, more hassle. there are some modern uh, um, new companies coming on the market right. with robots who, mm. who have flexible, yeah. adaptable... Yeah. Tell us about the Cambridge Medical well, well, Robotics uh, uh, differences yeah, well, from the XI you've mentioned. Yeah, well, it was, uh, CMR is, is, is one of the new robotic companies. Uh, I've been uh, and visited yeah. them and there was, I, I was disappointed with their uh, screen early on, uh, but they've improved that now. The I screen, think. I think, now is excellent, and, in, and I had the same concerns in the early stages when we were operating with. I preferred the immersive aspect of the Da Vinci, but I've changed my view because the flat, the flat screen, 3D glasses, we get a very good view now because the screens are very good, the technology is very good, but it gives you the advantage of, t of, of the communication with the rest of the team at the bedside. 
So I, I, I wouldn't say one is any better than the other, but I'd, I'd say the, 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 flat, the flat screen works very well and it does help with the communi communication. What about the total immersion of video games? Is, could well, that I, th get I, th I think that probably robot? will come, and, and, and I think as we've, as we've seen over our careers, one wouldn't rule anything out, would we? No. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you'd never have imagined. The, you'd never have imagined when I was your registrar that we'd have been doing this with the, the operation with robots or no, or this with, is with true. Laparoscopic surgery. I mean, that's what things. I was just come, going to say that, Mark, because you you, had, you mentioned uh, training people who are not going to be robotic surgeons. Will there be any surgeon in the future, and it's not that far away, who will not be a robotic? In other words, robotic surgery will go out. It'll be. Technology, won't it? It'll be technology, it's, it's and, not and, a, and the technology, the, the technology that we see today, won't be what we're seeing in ten years' yeah. time. So things develop at a, at a phenomenally fast, fast rate. And um, the concern I, I, I have is is that people you, people now do robotic fellowships, mm -hmm. uh, so they go off somewhere, just, which is a bit like going off to learn how to fly an airplane. You have to do a lot of hours, put in the hours. Mm -hmm. The, the danger is the, that you lose the fundamental principles of, you know, of what you're aiming to do with a, a restorative anterior resection, the spending flexure, the bowel prep, the 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 the, um, the difficulty around the anastomosis. Holy plane. Yeah, the holy plane, the anastomosis, and that actually we're we're creating uh, technology-based um, surgeons rather than. Well, I, I, I think we've actually enhanced it because it's much easier to demonstrate the anatomy, the holy plane, and uh, to everybody, and, and, and demonstrate what is actually needed, what is expected. And um, what about so your blood loss? That's gone down, that's hasn't gone down it? That's gone down hugely. Yeah. The, we, you know, we, we group and save. You know, we always used to cross match a low anterior resection. Even with your expertise, we used to cross match them in Basingstoke, didn't we? We didn't often give them, have to give them much blood, but we used to cross match. Now, now it's a group and it's a group and save because we don't expect to have to transfuse them. So, it it it, it has reduced blood loss. It's reduced post-operative complica complications. Things it hasn't changed are um, certainly, from, in my experience, from from open to laparoscopic to robotics. The the, re the wretched low anterior resection leak rate has stayed the, has effectively stayed about the well, same. Well, that's so why I'm keen on the TTSS taking. Well, I'm not sure that'll make any difference either. So <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not convinced. I, I think it's the, it's the lo the load. There's something about the low join because it doesn't happen for it doesn't happen further up. And and the argument with the with the with the TTS is is the multiple staples. But in my experience, they never leak at the ears at the side where you've stapled across. They leak at the back. They always leak at the Back. Yes, they do. Never at the front, never at the sides. They, it's the back. That's because you don't mobilise the splenic flexure. Well, no, 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 no. This is with mobilised <laughs> splenic flexures and good blood supplies. I, and, and, and I half wonder is whether is whether they develop um, an infection or an abscess. Oh, I'm sure, they, I'm sure then, that's one that, of the reasons. And then that that bursts through, and it, and, it, and and that's yeah. what causes the leak. And uh, rather than actually the a technical aspect of, of how you've put it together. What about I totally the, agree. The, the, you know, the aspect is, it is a real challenge now, isn't it? Because we don't have a robot in Basingstoke. We're hoping to get one. Portsmouth have a couple. There are probably half the hospitals in the UK do not have a, a functioning, you know, high quality robot at the moment. Um, and a lot more do not have a surgeon who can <laughs> take the optimal yeah. advantages from it. So, so th th how are we going to move into that era? Do you think, you think it's, 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 are there enough cases for everybody to learn? I mean, do all colorectal surgeons, do all general surgeons need to be trained in robotic technology? Probably in some form, but probably not to the, to the extent of being able to do a difficult low anterior resection. No, I think... Um Low, low, I've, I've changed my view a bit over the years, and I was always very much against subspecialization. Yes, subspecialization within, within general surgery to be a colorectal or an upper GI surgeon seemed very reasonable always, but 
to then sub subspecialize within colorectal surgery. I was dead against it right the way through until we started to get to the stage where we've got six, seven, eight colorectal surgeons in one hospital. There's no way, in my view, that six, seven colorectal surgeons can do an adequate number of TMEs in order to be good at it. I yeah. just don't think we can get, yeah. you're doing two or three a year, you're not, going to get, you're not going to get proficient at it in terms of dealing with the complications, in terms of the techniques and so forth. So I think it, 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 hospitals are going to have to rationalize and decide on us as we have done at Frimley. A smaller number of people do the TMEs, and if they don't do that, you're going to find it'll be taken away completely and go into certain centres. And, uh, and I, I can't see anything going away from that. Do you know when, all those years ago, I, it's such a long time ago, when three surgeons came from Sweden to Basingstoke and spent a week, and they watched, I think, three, four open TMEs, and Eric Nilsson was the leading figure of these three and he went back home and he said it there's something in this TME business he said we've got to do it but the only way we'll do it is if only one of us in this hospital actually does TMEs so he said I'll stop doing thyroids I'll stop doing breasts but you guys are going to have to give me all the TMEs and Frank Tubby gave me all the rectal cancers and without that voluntary specialization I would never have got off the ground and I think it goes on being back to my old chief guy Blackburn who said take it up or give it up. And of course the other, the other aspect is that there are now a proportion of patients who have complete clinical radiological response and never come to mm -hmm. surgery mm -hmm. and there are patients who have metastatic disease that we manage mm -hmm. without surgery so the number of rectal cancer operations has gone down quite significantly and the number of surgeons as you say has gone up but I think we can't we can't stop we can we must allow surgeons to develop robotic uh, technology and, yeah. and, and to use robots mm -hmm. because it, I, to my mind it's, it's just laparoscopic mm -hmm. surgery more expensive but but better and and then we probably have to say actually there are, not everybody will be it will will be able well not everybody should do total mesorectal excision because it's actually it's a subspecialty skill. I think it is a subspecialty skill and I think it the, the, the robot is becoming more applicable all around all quadrants of the yeah. abdomen than it was now it's not just limited to yeah. a, it's not just limited to TME we're talking about TME today mm. but it's applicable to upper gastrointestinal yeah. surgery lower gastrointestinal surgery and all, all aspects of abdominal surgery so the, and the technology is developing it'll become less expensive with yeah. time and I, I think you will see it more more wide more Very widespread you've got special experience with the cmr device and, yeah. uh, which is different with mm -hmm. a di explain the major differences well, because people are i'm british and yeah. i like the idea yeah. of cmr uh, getting into the market yeah. in and, uh, well, and, and it is getting into the market and i think the the with with the with the cmr robot um one has the uh, the flat screen that we've already talked about three-dimensional view the the hand pieces are more like a game console hand piece than they than the the da vinci which is the, the little pinches um which um a lot of the younger generation find a lot easier and 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 it, uh, after using the other ones i found a little bit of getting the hang of but once one's got the hang of it it works very well not using the feet so much it's more all everything all, all controlled with the hands and then when one comes to um what's that's really important because they're all the kids are, uh, yeah uh, getting into uh, and, games yeah. aren't they and, and and so i think they find these 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 ones very easy to use um and then the um uh, the, what's the term the bedside units, which are the robotic arms, are freestanding, so one can move them around and with with greater flex flexibility. Each comes with a shoulder. Yes, yeah, so it's and a, a sh shoulder, el shoulder, el shoulder, el elbow, elbow and, a wrist. And, a, and a wrist. Yeah. And, um, and they, so can you put how many do you put in? Well, you can put um, I think with a, two or you, three. You, yeah, three, four, if you need to. Yeah, and so they're you, all interconnect. And, and they all control them. You can the control them all. You control them. Control them all. The control and you can flick between one and another very easily on the on the on the hand pieces. Uh, once you get used to the system, you can move between between the various things. They're all color coded so it, it works it works very well um, and and is, is very applicable 
throughout the throughout the yeah. abdomen, right hemicolectomy, left hemicolectomy, transverse gallbladder, gallbladder, and, 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 and I would see that that uh, the great thing, and I know that Medtronic are trying to they have a robot, and the concept they're developing is that it should be cost neutral with laparoscopic. Yep. So if you believe that a laparoscopic appendectomy mm -hmm. is a good operation, you should be able to do it robotically which would be a great training exercise and, and maybe better for the patient. So if, if you, we all completely, uh, absolutely agree that a laparoscopic appendectomy is the sensible way to remove mm. an appendix in this day and age. You get a diagnostic laparoscopy and you have to take the appendix out safely. We all agree that mo the vast majority of gallbladders can be removed laparoscopically. So if you can have a cost-neutral aspect to removing gallbladders and um, appendixes. Yeah. It's it'll train yeah. training of the future. And, that, and and effectively, as we demonstrated with the cadavers, you can actually do a gallbladder operation completely on your own without an assistant. Really? And it's generally most people would have an assistant, but you can actually do the whole total operation. And you have to get out of the console to to put clips on and things, but you can do the whole operation with a, without an assistant and, and you hope control the camera yourself. So if, the, the, if training that a, the training aspect must be tremendous though, Mark, as well, isn't mm -hmm. it? For, for if, if you can, because one of the big problems with robotic surgery until recently has been the fact that it was so expensive and, and it was really only applicable to a limited number of cases mm. such as rectal cancer mm. like the, the urologists of course have been doing uh, they're using the robot for prostatectomy for a number of years and you can build a business case in your hospital for a lap for, a, for a robotic prostatectomy so there's a lot of robots mm. got into radical prostatectomy yeah, that they got is, they yes. got in by by the urology front but but the problem we have for instance in our hospital and not hospitals is people say well why why are we going to get a robot? Because it, it might be good for rectal cancer, but it probably isn't great for gallbladders and appendixes mm -hmm. to pay a lot of extra. Yeah. And so I think if we can make it, if, yeah. if you can make it um, cost neutral with uh, laparoscopic surgery, then I think it will yeah. advance training, it will advance the uh, advanced yeah. And that was the CMR principle yeah. as well, is to make it uh, cost new, the, the same cost as laparoscopic. I think most cases. industrial organizations would organize the timing differently, wouldn't they? I mean, hospitals leave expensive equipment unutilized evenings, weekends and so on in a way that uh, having invested that much money, most commercial companies would have round the clock use. And that we haven't really got very far with that, have we? I, I think I think you would, one has to be a, li a little careful, but I think it's it's certainly it's certainly feasible to to bring the bring the weekends in for your for the routine op op operating with the with with working the shifts. I think one has to be a little bit careful about going in and doing major operations outside emergency work in the middle of the night because our performance <laughs> does vary in the middle of the night from, <laughs> from, uh, from during the day and, and that wouldn't necessarily be the right thing to do for patients to having it working, working 24 hours a day, I don't think, but, but uh, certainly you could work it longer during the day. Yeah. So Mark, I, I think by the way you've changed your practice, you clearly believe that a robotic total mesolectal -like excision, you do it better than open and better than laparoscopic surgery now mm -hmm. and, and and but do you think that for training can you train people better robotically in robotic surgery than you could in open or that you could in laparoscopic i think you can train them in this in the same way that you can train them in all the others yeah. i don't think there's any any disadvantages now um the 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 open screen of the CMR is easier to train than a single console. See, yeah. with a, with a, the single console is quite difficult to train a surgeon um, purely because you, you, they're getting a different view from what you, you're, you're getting and yeah. sometimes they can be absolutely fine and you, it, you think well, that doesn't look quite right and then you look down you look into the console yeah it's fine carry on um, and then in other, si other situations, they're in trouble and you, you haven't quite picked it up on the, on the screen. And that's with the Da Vinci yeah. system, but on the, because you're sitting behind them on the flat screen, it's much easier to, tra it's much easier mm. to train. 
laparoscopically, yes, that's 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 fairly easy easy to, easy to train uh, train as well. So I think we can we can train. And, and of course, in all dual, dual console operating. Dual console is operating is, is, is superb for training. Yes. So we've got we've got the 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 the, the training is is relatively straightforward in terms of training and the t technology. You can do a lot of that on the bench. Training, training in the technology, and then, then bring them in to work on the on on, on patients. But it, an essential part of doing these operations, one has to get the practice and the experience. Yeah. For it's particularly TME, because the TME, it's not just one. They're not all the same, are they? No. they vary hugely in terms of the anatomy and the complexity, um, and and. Um, and, and one has to have the experience to be able to cope with that, that, that variation. I think the nerve preservation is a huge mm. part of that. Yeah. What's very interesting, of course, is that the, the, both the companies and surgeons are investing time and effort and money in training, which, which, which mm. uh, it's actually which is quite interesting because it, it, it's, it's, you have to learn the technology. And it's quite interesting. I sometimes think that surgeons haven't spent time learning, so for instance, about, um, about uh, diatom diatomy, how you, how it, uh, so, but it's interesting how robotics has focused everybody in, on training in the company to focus on. So, so th I, I w would hope that the practicality and the affordability is going to change because that's been a big issue. Mm. And w are there any big downsides to robotic can you see any any big if if we, if we were to take out the the costs i think i i it must I, take, I, it must it, take it, longer it, to it, open if you have a crash uh, a major vessel for instance it, it's very quick you can do, you can undock the robot in a matter of seconds and and, and, is, and can, th that's can true do. of all the rob all yeah. men yeah they, yes there is and, and and we do teach that because that's quite important if, yeah. it's, if it's needed yes in a catastrophe if there is a catastrophic uh, I've only a lot seen, of the, a I've lot of bleeding one. <laughs> yeah a lot of bleeding one can get under control but the you know a pelvic sidewall vein for example uh, the pelvis fills up pretty quickly if that is yeah. caught, doesn't it and then and then you need to be in you need to be in swiftly but uh, it's, uh, yes, you can if, if necessary. So, so you still need to consent the person that you might have to make an incision. To well, access. we do for any yeah. min any yeah. any minimal access operation. Yeah. We always do that because it, it it's always a possibility. Yeah. So yes, but uh, I think pra practically yes, it takes longer. And they, these things all, all these things do t do take longer. And you know, you look at the. Then you know, look back at the uh, the operating lists that, that we used to assist in in regis as registrars. Yeah. These vast number of cases, and there'd be a thyroid, there'd be a prostate, there'd be a, an anterior resection, and a right hemicolectomy on the same list, and all done at f phenomenal speed. I, and that that that's all changed, hasn't it? I remember a famous surgeon. I won't mention his name, uh, who said to me, "I have I simply cannot spend the whole morning on one rectum." Yeah. And I was too young and too, uh, well, unsure of myself to say what I now think, wish I'd said, which is, well, if I was the patient, I would find a surgeon who can find a whole morning yeah. for my rectum, yeah. uh, yeah, because it's, it's that's nerve done. preservation, function. Yeah. It's an all day now, Bill, it's an all day. <laughs> most people would actually dedicate most of the day to doing, yeah. and that's probably appropriate if it's, if it's done yeah. well and properly and safely, because, yeah. and of course, we have to remember that the number of operations, as I said a minute ago, has gone down, so mm. you're not going to be doing as many operations as we did in, in no. those days. No. I mean, varicose vein surgery, for instance, is diminished by people sclerosing varicose veins. So, so there's a whole, a whole number of operations we used to do that we don't do anymore. So I think it's probably yeah, well, gastrectomy, so, highly selective yeah, vagotomy. Highly selective vagotomy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I'm very so, keen on I mean, that. I, 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 I honestly believe that in 10 years' time that people will have taken out the term robotic the robotic that we talk about nowadays is not robotic surgery it's the I, ha yeah, I have this saying that that robots a, a and complex tools yeah. don't operate surgeons do so it's yeah. not the robot yeah. operating it's not the robot it's yeah. the surgeon who's controlling the robot and the laparoscope and the robot won't make uh, i think there is a certain belief that a robot will make you a better surgeon and it won't yeah mind you artificial intelligence may end up 
doing it may end up it may might end, end up, up doing the team if they only the yes. robotic brains would also find an, a more intelligent dissecting instrument um, which couldn't cut a hole in a big vessel by mistake i think a sensitive cutting uh, and well, the, the, the AI recognition of those. Yeah, things, well, so, and so, yeah. one under, I understand that the uh, intuitive are storing vast amounts of information about each move made by a robotic surgeon and uh, artificial. Uh, I mean, the robot is the only way we will get to artificial intelligence actually doing a TME, isn't it? And I would love to live long enough to see the first AI um, robotic TME where the surgeon has his cup of coffee and maybe interferes with what is being done, rather be like a pilot in you a could, plane. You could probably do that right today with an easy one. That's the problem with a lot of things, isn't yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. You could probably yeah. program a, a, yeah. a robot to do an easy uh, yeah. and, and just have it a bit like the driverless car which is now in action uh, but they still have somebody sitting to or the pilot in the uh, modern uh, airplane but but I'd, I'd, the consent I'd, would be interesting when you're telling the patient this is a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the, the 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 one of the things that i think and i've, I've talked to my uh, when i spoke about this five or six years ago the great thing about the ro robotic, as you said, it, it can analyze your performance and it can tell you that hopefully you're improving, your, your, um, your performance is improving. It might also analyze your performance later on in your life and you might be, you might get in your, your retirement. <laughs> 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 it's, it's possible that well, actually, it is, yeah. and, and, and it might not be late in your life, if something may happen, your, your functionality may change and it might tell you, it might spark up and say, Pass sell by this. Yeah, you've, got, you've got limited number of uses <laughs> like the instruments. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I, I think we're going to come back and the last section, I think we're going to talk about the low rectal cancer and the whole aspect of, of, of stapling safe, uh, because I think that we've touched on that already. And a lot of the concerns and I think the, the problems people get into are how low can you get and how, how you're going to wash out and how you're going to staple. So we'll talk about that in the next section. You can find uh, a whole series of videos and uh, links to our series of discussions around rectal cancer at uh, this address. And if you have any suggestions what we might cover, please let us know. Thank you very much for joining us.